the duration of the demonstration. Um, okay, so uh, just really quickly, uh, the paint I'm using is the Royal Talons Amsterdam range. And I'm using some artist quality colors, the, the yellows, uh, lighter colors, and the white, um, as well as their standard range. Um, I'll show you my palette. So it's all ready to go. Um, I work with large brushes just to really get a lot done in a short space of time. Um, I work on canvas. And what I'll do actually is I'll do the painting here. And I'll use this as a bit of a mixing tray, um, and maybe this side as well. So you'll get to see some of the color mixing going on. Um, I, I think I'll, I'll paint. If this isn't my photo, it's going to be that one or that one. Um, I'll do this one, I think. Um, yeah, it's on my photo, um, just because I, I kind of, yeah, I was still deciding half an hour ago what to do, and I just thought, uh, these faces were pretty good. So I'll start off with, like I say, this portrait, and then we'll do something a little bit different. Um, okay, so I don't do any drawing. We're going to go straight in with paint. Um, I've done my brush. This is my first demo of the, of the year. So i um, just going to get back into demo mode. Um, I'm going to start off by applying color. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm working on canvas, and I've laid down. This is something like chromium green or something with white, it's just I had a lot of it. So I thought I'd cover some canvases. Plus this green will actually be quite good as a base color against the reds and yellows. So that's probably what I'm gonna start off with. So I'm going to dip into some uh, mid yellow, uh, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, some burnt sienna, bit of um, ultramarine violet, bit of orange, and the first mark is always just to try something out, just to see what a color looks like, something like that. If it goes, so it's definitely got more yellow there, just put a bit of orange in there, something like that. It's really just a trial and error, the, the color, and also to get me warmed up as well. So we'll go in with a bit more paint this time, maybe a bit of green. I'm a bit reticent to, to kind of mix at this stage because I want, kind of fresh color to come out. So there's a bit of a risk when you go straight from here to there, but sometimes the risk pays off, sometimes it doesn't, but we'll see. Just want a bit more color there. And just drag some of this paint down. So I want these warm colors, but I want it to be bro broken up with maybe a bit of the violet, a bit of brilliant blue, maybe a bit of green. And we'll try that out over here. So I'm just looking for the green, just to, I suppose, break up the color. And we'll put some color here. And maybe go for a bit more magenta. Uh, I will try the, the color now, just to, I think it's more of a nervous thing, just, just Better be safe and sorry with some marks. That there. And we'll put some of this red. So I'm imagining the face is going to go in here somewhere. Um, so so this damp, uh, this brush is a bit damp. Um, it's not soaking. Uh, it's just so the paint doesn't dry out. Uh, just keep an eye on the time as well. And just it's funny, I've been, we've been in all day. Uh, this is our studio. We live about three miles away. Um, so my head is still, to some extent, still working on the, the um, landscapes that I started today. Um, so just trying to get into portrait mode. Um, right, so her mouth is about there. It could be completely wrong, but just take a bit of a chance, there's the, the nose. Normally people start with the eyes, I just thought, I, mean, I don't particularly like having a system other than just throw color at it and hope something lands that's uh, interesting. I've just added a bit more violet into the mix and there's a bit of green in there as well, just to make the color go a little bit um, more muted, I suppose. 
Um, yeah, again, just trying to. So when you do painting like this with no drawing, um, I might have overestimated. So the eye might it might be better just lowering that down a bit more. Happy New Year, by the way. Um, I've been so engrossed, don't really know what what day it is. Um, okay, and we'll put the other eye kind of over there. Okay, so the thing I want to try to achieve with the first few marks is the elongated, the, the stretch of a of a stroke to some extent to, to make me motivated to be assertive. And a few marks just to state where I think things are going to go, but with enough flexibility, I suppose that um, you know, hopefully I can change them if, if they don't work. Um, just should be a little bit darker. And we'll pepper these yellow marks around. Uh, the other thing is I'm using quite thick paint, I suppose. Um, because I'm trying to nail things um, early on, in some instances anyway. Um, so the colour sparks to life, even if I were to overwork some bits. Okay, a bit yellow. So the other thing, it could become quite repetitive when you kind of go into a comfort zone. So I might still want to get some other colours mixed in here. Um, like so, maybe get a bit more green coming through actually. Um, yeah, maybe maybe about there. There's no green in it as such, uh, but when the green kind of comes close to melding in a bit with the yellow and the red, it might go a bit kind of browny. Um, also, I'm aware that the, the scene has got a lot of red and yellow in it, so you know, to have a complementary of the green, I think would be quite nice. Um, and we'll just just a bit more in the way of breaking the color up. So acrylic dries darker. So what will happen? Um, it might look luminous now, but it will just the edge will just be taken off it. And that will allow to some extent me to use stronger highlights, maybe even some, um, I mean, I'm not going to get purer than that, but when I put white in it, because I'm not using any white at the moment, that should just elevate some of the uh, colors that are coming in later, or some of the finishing marks. Um, okay, so yeah, there's some dark areas. I'm, that's the other thing. I'm a bit reticent to go in with really strong darks at this stage because I really want to exploit some of the colour. But obviously, I'm using the same brush, and after a while, it gets kind of it, it kind of gets mucky. But I I like a bit of muck um, because you get an interesting drift of colour which you wouldn't have presumed you could get. Uh, some interesting browns. So I use the other side to get a bit more red. Um, and it's one of the things I, I like about being a bit spontaneous. Um, I've also spent an awful lot of time, uh, actually over Christmas, just, um, and, and in fact, over the last few months, just considering like the way I work and the style, if you like. Um, otherwise, you, you kind of plateau out a bit and you just, you end up just repeating the same things over and over again. Um, Want to get some blue in, um, like to get some stronger yellow in as well, uh, but we'll get, I like to get some clean blue. So I'll just put that brush to one side. And so I've got, a, so this is a two inch um, flat. It's by Dale Rowney. Uh, it's called the Sky Flow brush. Um, it, it's interesting because it's quite floppy, um, but once you load it with paint, it firms up and, and it gives you a very kind of direct stroke. Um, so some blue, 
Again, just test it out a little, little bit. We'll put some over there. So again, that might be, be quite, um, in comparison with what else I've got, it kind of comes forward quite a bit, and yet her top is a softer blue. Uh, and again, it's one of the things I'm slightly aware of. I, I, I just want my paintings to pop a little bit more. So if I use these almost saturated colors in some areas, um, I mean, I can easily douse it down. I'll just pick up some of this red, make it a bit more mucky, and the, the blue almost just gets subdued. Um, I like the idea it's being done spontaneously rather than I'm trying very difficult or trying very hard to um, to make it go that colour. So I'm hopefully allowing the colour to function a little bit more naturally. Okay, more blue. Maybe get this phthalo green in. Um, so rather than dive in with the darks, I'm gonna use maybe this combination. Yeah, we'll go the green, bit of burnt sienna, bit of, um, I will kind of mention my colors as I start to use them. That's kind of like a Windsor blue. Uh, it's not a Windsor blue, it's like a um, phthalo blue. Just put that in there. If you're going to be um, assertive, I guess, with colour, you, you want to do it early on so it manage, manages to kind of gain some kind of foothold. Uh, I found it really difficult, kind of like halfway through, introduce a colour which isn't really going to be there. So hopefully all these colours will come through yet. So her head thing is going to slightly go off. Um, that there. Let's get the red back in. There's a there's a point definitely when I'm doing this stage where I'll have an inkling that it's coming to an end. <laughs> um, and I'll have to normalize proceedings, which is why, because I quite like this stage, I'm, I'm eager to kind of see it through a little bit longer. Uh, and I can just hopefully use a bit more imagination in terms of what I want to do to for the highlight, for example, that's going to draw out her face uh, or with some other colors. So at this stage, mentally, I'm, I'm not fixated by, by detail. Um, so I'm just going to go for another brush. And before the, the strong whites are used, we'll go in yellow, maybe a bit of green, a bit of yellow ochre. Just, I've got some um, cadmium orange here as well. Uh, obviously, colours get a little bit corrupt, but I kind of want a little bit of that. And what we'll do is we'll just draw some of this colour up there and around here. And just in here. Yeah, in my mind initially, I had the idea that maybe I'll drag the yellow all the way down. Uh, and I still kind of think that might be a good idea. <laughs> it might not, but um, we'll just put it in just to see what happens. Just I'm aware when it starts to kind of look more like the photo, um, I won't have the opportunity to to um, be that imaginative after that, because I, I would have been then, my brain would have just gone down the, the straightforward route. And also this is a portrait of someone I don't know. Um, and I kind of, I think the priority is to maybe make the painting interesting. Just get that green coming through again. Yeah, so just that little flick of green coming through, it just relates to some of the other uh, bits I've done. So where I've established almost, I mean, it's almost the entirety of the mouth, the top lip and the bottom lip. Um, 
just want to drag, probably should go more yellow. But again, with acrylics, if you start overworking it, as I've just done there, it's going to fight against you and it's going to win because <laughs> the, the colors will start to go very, very dull. Um, okay, so we want a strong yellow round about there, maybe get some green coming through there. And I've kind of established that they will just get And I'm kind of deliberately, so the temptation I think when you do portraits um, is to start blending, um, feathering. Oh. And I, I definitely don't want to do that. I, I kind of, I think I made a decision quite early on when I started painting like this, that I don't, I don't want to use the easy route. Because blending kind of gives you the opportunity to build up. And as you build up, what tends to happen is your, your kind of, um, your subconscious kind of goes back in itself, whereas, you know, it's because you know you're, you're trying to work it. Um, like I say, it starts to become a bit more predictable. So I know when I block things in, even with the colors I've got, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. So we'll get some of the strong yellow there. Just over here as well. I also like the idea that like each mark is it's trying to make me confident. Um, because I, I'm not allowing myself much room to um, to correct. Okay, so yeah, strong yellow here. Yeah, so at this point I can maybe make a couple of judgments about maybe some of the, so I would suggest that little highlight. It's quite a precise little mark. So I'll start it off by, by doing something like that. Quite like the little shimmer of blue and green in it. So it's just I've got some red near there. So I, I just thought it might be worthwhile having that color. It's great. It's getting heavy now. Um, a bit there, over there. And yes, yeah, so I like the fact that it's not, I haven't plummeted for tonal ranges so much. Um, I mean, there, there's obviously some in here, but it's much more to do with color. Let's give my hand a rest. Probably got enough paint over here. Normally when I do a, a normal painting, I'll do this for an hour and then I'll go and play on my phone for an hour. Actually, not an hour, so however long. Um, yeah, I spent on my phone. I mean, it's not on my phone. It's doing constructive admin. Um, okay, so I will introduce more of the phthalo green in now. Because maybe I'll darken this, darken some bits here, just to counterbalance that. But I don't want to use too many darks in the face, and I'll keep the face as quite a soft, because she looks soft, so maybe the face could be a soft aspect to the uh, portrait, but we'll just use the dark as a way of framing her features. And I can also find out, obviously, she's got this fairly elaborate um, headwear. So yeah, and that little edge there. Again, the temptation is to do so. A lot more of that little edging. It's it's so tempting just to draw, um, but the discipline is really to hold off. Because once you use that card, I mean, your brain is just gonna is working off logic, and I still want that 
kind of primitive brain, the mammalian brain, I think, to um, be utilized. So some of that there. Yeah, there's some nice shadows. So that red there really, it's meant to be that, but it's not quite in the right place, but obviously it doesn't matter. I say it doesn't matter. I mean, obviously, if you're doing a portrait, it, it's going to matter the it looks like um, the person or the objects you're doing. It's one of the things I've, I've definitely found. Um, it's funny because I've, I've had and I've got some commissions at the moment. Um, and I've actually working to both me and Maria working towards some work for the David Shepherd Foundation. And I've, I've definitely found, um, I, I think when you're doing art or something creative, I suppose, you're, you're kind of guided by your, your feelings. Um, I, I certainly am. So I, I'm kind of slightly torn by commercialism and like what I find, you know, that engages me um, at whatever time I'm doing it. So at the moment, I'm really engaged with the colours, but um, at some point I know it's got a switch. Just a few marks here and there. It's almost like a build-up before. Then launching into the, the fundamentals of um, creating a portrait. So one of the things I've found, um, and this is what's really what really messes with, the, with your brain when you're painting, um, I like realism and I like drawing and I like the idea of making it look like something. But at some point, what your brain does, it uh, let's say you've plateaued out because you've done the same thing a lot. And then you, you do paintings and you get to a certain state where you think, actually, I like this before I start making it look, you know, normal. Um, so that then becomes such a facet to the way you paint because you're, you're torn by the fact that, well, I know I'm going to make it look like this lady, but um, I'm also torn by the fact that creatively, I think it's slightly more interesting, maybe if I don't go too mad on, on a likeness. Right, so just before I normalise, I'm just going to, there's a few strokes of red here and there. I might even do something to bring the mouth out a little bit more and, uh, a couple of other things. Go for strong magenta and red. So it's just things like that is a nice little diagonal leading you in. Obviously, her head there is dark, but I like that red. So that red may well uh, remain. Uh, she's got this red thing there, red thing there. And again, we're just looking around here quite quickly. Um, I find it really useful working on everything. Uh, that way you get a more coherent um, image, I think. Um, I used to do uh, figure stuff and I used to work with, from one eye. <laughs> Finish that, then that eye, then the nose and build up that way. But I found that um, you'd end up with something that was like bits were good, but the overall was a little bit disjointed. Um, Okay, so just, just a little bit of strength there. And this is another thing, as I start to think about the lightness, I know that's gonna corrupt the painting, which again is, is kind of a tricky balancing act. Um, I'm gonna have a few markers, so that little line, it's going to be helpful. Just going to create an almost neutral color just to find maybe some edging bits for where I think the nose. I think Marie's going to take some photos. Um, yeah, there's a bit of shading there, but I know the white's going to make that just come out a bit. Maybe a couple of little marks. Here. Yeah. So the eyes, it's a tricky one. Again, it's one of those things that you bring the eyes out, or do you just have them as kind of pools of um, 
shadow um, that just needs to come down a bit. This is one of the things because when you, the initial edges are quite diffused and soft, and then at the moment you bump, kind of bang in a straight line, you're kind of going to be drawn to it. So I might bring this eye out eventually, and that eye can just, um, just sit back, just got to find an angle. Yeah, that's going to come down. And just around here. Yeah, I feel like the line work now is going to consume me. Uh, okay, so I want to lighten the background. And so that will introduce really just stronger highlights, just a new brush. So I still got all these other brushes because um, they'll they might be useful, they might not. Um, just thinking about the blue, that that's fine. Uh, okay, so the background is really light. Um, I could go really light. I think what I might do is just edge it. So I've got this thing, which is um, I think it's warm. Actually, no, it's neutral gray. Um, and it's just a shortcut, really, so I can create a, a neutral background. So just a bit of that with white lemon, ye uh, lemon yellow. And put it on the side. So thank God discipline has uh, kicked in over my years of painting. So in the past, what I would have done was I would have done the same thing with the background with all these colors. Um, now I still do that with some paintings, but um, I just find the more painting I do, it's more about almost doing less. We'll put a bit of blue in there as well. Like what, like that's really interesting. I don't need to, sledgehammer the background with anything too um, noisy. Uh, okay, so this, what this will do is help me to define maybe some of the edges. A bit more yellow. So we'll just, yeah, just one go, hopefully fairly painless. Uh, now her top almost blends in with the background, so I might bring some of that in to her top. Um, this is the, the logic thing, because logic would say, well, her top kind of is a light blue and the background's light, but when you're trying to create a, a painting that maybe has a little bit more too often in terms of like the design or the rhythm of it, you might not want to just be overly literal. Okay, so yeah, this, yeah, so that's way off. <laughs> uh, does it matter? Well, well, we'll see. And yeah, so the, the cheek comes in about there, then it, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I think actually the cheek might come out a bit more. I, actually, that, that, I think that's okay. One of the things I do like is when you bring this in from the background into the into the um, the main kind of component. So we may well do that. Just check the time as well. So I've still got my exceedingly strong highlights and some really strong darts if I want them just to make the painting, you know, if you want to make it in your face, you can use um, all those other things, you know, like a little tiny brush, really strong darks. But again, it's just one of the things, I quite like things reflecting the energy of what you start off with. So just, some that in there, and using a big brush for some of these edging bits. I mean, it just looks it just looks wrong because it's so cutting. But that's what I like about it. Um, I mean, up until I 
get maybe a little brush out and I, I start to perfect things, I'm quite happy for it to look a little bit clumsier. And I end up doing that, maybe leaving more of the base color in some areas. Okay, and uh, it's funny, I ran some one-off workshops last year and I just take it for granted that, that yeah, just get a big brush out and start painting with it. But that was almost one of the biggest fears like someone had just, well, how do you paint little details? But actually, I mean, I came to Big Brush quite late, um, but you soon pick up a bit of dexterity with it. And it's surprising how quickly you adapt. She just put a bit, bit more blue, I think, on this side. Almost gonna blend into the background. Yeah, that definitely needs to come up, but. So just love looking at the time. When I'm painting, it's the one thing I kind of, I look at and I, I just want my heart rate just to speed up a little bit more. Just that sense of uh, urgency, I, I find it quite, Probably not healthy, I don't know, but let's see, okay. Right, so with this color, we're gonna move into her top and then we're gonna go in the face. So what I don't want is overuse of this color because like that color in terms of that color, I mean, I need some of it, but I don't wanna obliterate the, the, the saturation that I've, that I've got, which I think is quite interesting. I think it's the thing about interpretation when you do a painting. Um, there's a lot of people who can who can paint, you know, like technically really, really well, and you see them all over the place. Um, but that interpretation is is uh, I think what sometimes kind of gets lost um, because you're too busy thinking how many beads can I see in like the minute of measurements. Just a bit more yellow in here. Just so as I come into the face, maybe to shoot out or not shoot out, but introduce maybe more yellow into the light. You probably won't be able to pick it up on the screen, but there's, there is a bit more of that yellow mixed in. It's one of the things I, I kind of, I, I think quite deeply about this idea that well, when someone kind of gets a painting of yours, there's gonna be subtle things that they'll pick up over time rather than just, it's just the, the same marks. Just some of these lines. Again, they kind of lead you up. Yeah, at some point I'll be, I'll, <laughs> I'll think, does it look like a, uh, I don't think I'm quite there yet. So just, just a few cuts in here. So I've been thinking about this for months. When you put in an initial mark, that starts to crackle and some are quite full. And then when it comes to this stage where you're being definitive, it's like a very full stroke, much more pressure on the brush. So, you know, you, you get more paint out. Um, but I was doing some paintings where I thought, do I go fuller? Do I go grainier? Do I just go full, full, full? Um, yeah, months of fun doing that. <laughs> okay, and just a bit lighter there. 
Okay, so we want to move into the face. Now, I want to use this color, but I want it to be towards uh, maybe the yellow. In fact, what I'll do, I'll use that. And I'll use another brush, I think. Yeah, I'll use a clean brush only because I want it to be quite a conclusive light yellow. Just get a bit more lemon yellow coming through. There's a bit of gray there, so just kind of get that. Get that out of there. So strong light on the forehead. So I kind of went in firm and then I just relaxed. So it almost revealed the little marks underneath. And just drag that along there. So I may well use, so I keep jogging. I may well use a slightly smaller brush just to slightly correct. More yellow. Yeah, so it's a bit tricky. Okay, gonna just have a my little detail brush for some of these marks. Just because I'm working in a delicate area. So I just want maybe a slightly smaller mark I can play with. Just There, breathe again. That there. Yeah, so I need to just bring in something lighter, but not as light as that. So some of these bits I'm going to just come back to. I just want to get in what I feel is the, the kind of bigger aspects of it. It's one of the things I, um, I like the softness of what I start off with, but I, I definitely like the graphic undertones of, you know, boom, boom, of getting that very crisp bit of edging in. I just think it kind of makes a very assertive point with regards your what you're trying to say yeah so that that could be it's funny whenever I see bits like that the lovely little highlight that I could ding in um, I'm slightly more um, cautious because it seems it's almost like leading you into a bear trap as you start to peck at it so I'm going to come back to that. Just added a bit of orange in there. In fact, I'm feeling brave, so I will put that, because it, it might be that her bottom lip is too big. So um, we'll just put in, just put in that light. Okay, so we'll move along on this side. Yeah, if I notice things, something out of the corner of my eye, I'll, I'll kind of maybe do something in there. Just checking on time as well. Okay, so 
where the light is and it meets the dark. I've just added a bit more magenta. I, I feel that needs to go lighter anyway, but just as a way of slightly melding it in. Because um, what I could do, just a bit more orange as well. I could maybe use this color for there as well. Yeah, this is gonna give me the position of the top lip, which I'll need to adjust. When I'm this close to it, so this is my excuse. <laughs> it kind of, um, yeah, it's gonna look dis distorted a bit. more in the way of yellow. There's some subtlety just here and there on the forehead. In fact, this actually goes a bit higher up. And that needs to probably come up a little bit. Again, this is one of those things that, um, yeah, the eye needs to the dark the eye needs to come out a bit more. It's the kind of thing that um, there's a portrait in my my last book um, of a black lady, just a three quarter view of her face. Doesn't look anything like her, but it's one of my favorite portraits. Um, so sometimes you do you do these things, and it's kind of like the technique that maybe you like more than the whether it looks like someone. Okay, there's some yeah, subtlety there. I think with the time, I'm, I'm more conscious to do big movements rather than, you know, get a little, very small brush out or do these subtle things. I think when you demonstrate, maybe it's slightly more interesting doing the large things. Bring that in. Yeah, we'll do something with that towards the end. I just want to do a few things on the outskirts and then we'll um, we'll wrap this up. So I can use this color to find some additional highlights. Just here and there. Again, by now, logic kicks in. Um, very conscious to do rounded things, but again, I kind of want it to be slightly more graphic. And by the way, I'm recording this, and if it turns out the recording now is, is okay, I'll upload it to my YouTube channel uh, over the next few days. Please subscribe. <laughs> Just my name. Oh yeah, Marie will do, do some work this evening and put that in the link or in the chat room. Yeah, definitely need to bring that up and just definitely work on the mouth. It's kind of thing that if I didn't do another demo, uh, the second half of this would be lots of little things uh, going on. But like I say, that, that's not when I do demos, that's the least thing I'm, certainly when I see other demonstrators, that's the least uh, enjoyable thing for me anyway. Um, Okay, just a couple of little blobs around here. And just over there. There's some subtle nuanced kind of light, very subtle tints. Um, yeah. I, they're the kind of thing sometimes that they're quite good, but uh, maybe not in this case. 
right, that yellow needs to come out, da, 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 put yellow there. Okay, so we'll go back to, to this. Just get a little bit more done now with the big brush. So I've got the underlying color roughly, and I can just edge a few bits and pieces Just over here, so this kind of comes out. And again, just, just have to watch the strength of color. And just there. Okay, so we'll. We'll kind of do the tail end bits just to slightly correct some of the drawing bits. So I'm going to go for a phthalo green, phthalo green, phthalo blue, just to create a strong dark. And we can just look at some of these, this kind of thing like, Tomorrow, when I look at this, I'll probably think, oh, yes, I should have done that and I should have done that. But again, just, just where we are today and just, just do a few bits here and there. Uh, just a tiny bit of purple and magenta in just, just that bit of dark. Just wanted that in. And actually where these, some of these beads are, it's quite, they're kind of good shapes to just lead you in. So I think I'll, I might do an interior for the second one. Um, So, yeah, just maybe some dark around here. Just want some of those to echo. And it's probably come up a bit, but I quite like it as it is. So, just making an executive decision. Good strong dark over here. Just seeing what colors I've got to utilize some bits. Okay, so just in there. I want it dark, but maybe not as dark. Ah, uh, that's better. So if I don't like this, this, will, this bit will be cut out if this goes pear-shaped. It kind of just needed a sharp, something sharp I could almost do a similar kind of thing just just to give that element like a dark against the light I just touched it on. apologies All right just just a couple of minutes just where the mouth is. Obviously what I've got to do, I've got to do every single teeth. Bit of, um, 
all the teeth I can see. No, that would that would be an absolute disaster if I did that. Just accentuating the bottom lip. So I've kind of gone over the requisite position, but I mean that that's why it's helpful to have some marks which kind of don't look right. It just makes the other marks look really good. It's presumptuous of me. Yeah, just want to bring that top lip. Yeah, so when you start using white and you start mixing color up, it's going to go uh, messy, which is why I don't do a lot of, yeah. The conscious mind, it's horrible. It's more of a, she's shouting at me to stop. <laughs> Yeah, just kind of needed a bit, it probably is a bit too wide, but, you know, it's a quick demo. Yeah, just, just a bit of a shadow. And I mean, I haven't really investigated the nose at all. Um, not that I need to. Maybe. Just going to drop a lighter. <laughs> I got all these big brushes and I'm performing surgery now and I just need. So that's a three quarter inch. It is nearly done. Sorry, just procrastinating. Uh, yeah, it's just going to put a bit of light. Just a little bit of light around the nose and then. With any of these, if I feel I need to do more before they go online, I'll probably just tweak them a little bit, but I think this one is as close to completion as I think I'm gonna go. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and lie down for a couple of minutes, but hopefully it gives you kind of a good intro anyway, I'll just turn it around. So you can see it slightly. Okay. Quick portrait. Um, okay, so uh, again, big brush. Really, I should use an even bigger one for this, but never mind. Uh, lots of orange, yellow ochre. I'm, I'm going to introduce this gray in. A bit of green. Um, I really like the combination of the phthalo green with the, with the uh, deep violet and the burnt sienna. So we've got those in, a bit of magenta. And if you're nervous at all, it, it's quite good to start maybe in the corner just to see what's going on. Um, and obviously this is incredibly, I mean, that orange, uh, that's an artist quality paint for you, so it really springs to life. Um, so I want some marks to be quite full, some to be, when, when it goes granular, it's, just, it's only because there's either the paint running out or I, I just want something um, maybe to contrast uh, what I've got. So we'll go green, that, some of that, <laughs> some of that, and we'll just put that in. So I've still got 
well, remnants of the orange. So we'll just top that up again and just make that go in there. So this part is obviously dark, but I want some of the orange to echo uh, in the color because that orange is probably gonna play quite a big part in the sea. And with something like this, I might put a few marks in which break out of the verticals up there. And we'll maybe change it up over here. We'll get some more blue. So I've got some cobalt blue here as well. Um, I always use a bit of brown sometimes just to anchor the color into something a bit more neutral. Um, otherwise it's gonna be, be very saturated color all over the place. Um, all right, I just remembered. Uh, <laughs> there's a window there. Um, oh, that's bad planning. Right, that's what I'm painting. And we'll, we'll just put that over there. Yeah, so I'm gonna drop in some yellow shortly. Just get the dark in. So a lot of the color mixing is probably gonna happen on the canvas with this one. Good thing about this scene, like I said, it's, it's kind of, um, obviously I wanna get it so it looks like it, but I don't really need to um, be too controlled. Um, I do have a mixing tray, which I'll occasionally use, but we'll just, we'll continue diving in. Just get some magenta and some green over here. I just know they're gonna kind of cancel each other out, but even if I have some of that color, it's hopefully gonna look interesting. Okay, so we wanna, quite a bit of warmth coming in there. Just before I do that, just a little, little bit more in the way of, that's kind of what I was after, that, that's kind of gone a bit like bright green and red. So I might just put some tone in here. It's hard to judge things like this because what my brain does, it's, it's, it's kind of ready on the circuit, just looking at everything. And, and that just made me consider things a little bit more. I'd, um, so I'd, I'd kind of mark that down as a problem. <laughs> uh, just some marks over there. So from this, I need, needed to go a lot lighter. So let's say I don't want to use any white. So I can use a lot of yellow ochre, uh, burnt sienna, some ultramarine violet, although I've got that as a background. And we'll just start to don't really want too much of the green coming through. So just need to bed some more orange in. Yeah, so there's some white just embedded in there somewhere. Don't want that either. That's one of the reasons why if I start off with some of that orange, that's just gonna stimulate my, my palette a bit more. It's gonna encourage me anyway, just to not be too shy about using some color. Okay, gonna utilize the gray. Definitely want a bit of blue. And there's a, 
particular, this color here, it's kind of like a mushroom color. It looks really nice. I'm just trying to create a version of it. Let's keep an eye on time as well. So back to green, back to the purple. Yeah, so you create some fairly interesting neutral colors when everything starts to meld in a bit. We're gonna do something there. Okay. So something I've uh, certainly been toying with, I really like um, early on anyway, you get contrasts of some tones, some strong color, some muted color, um, and even some of the marks. Um, so normally I'd save up the white, but on this occasion, I'm gonna introduce it quite early, but we're gonna put quite a bit of color in it. Um, and maybe launch it. So I need to just try and error a few marks. Again, just trying a few colors out, trying a few variations just to see what comes about. And the chances are, um, I'll start with this, but then I'll pepper it with um, slightly more neutral shades um, once I start building up a bit more. So for example, let's say we wanna go light here and we wanna go with some strong blue up here. Yeah, so eventually there'll be something more neutral going on here. But as long as I've included some color at the beginning, then I know at least it's gonna have some of that coming through. And we'll introduce this around here. Time as well. Yeah. Probably going to use in some places quite a bit of tone. So once we've got the white going, we need to showcase that a bit more. So this is the brush I've been using. There's another one I've been using for some of the darks, but I'm just gonna create, because I've got all the colors I've used so far, it's just gonna create a gray that echoes some of those colors. I've added a bit more orange. I'll add a little spurt there. It's one of the reasons why it's not in the scene, but it just creates that little bit of zing. And that's just going to encourage me so in order to have the, the, the angle of the, the um, computer, which is what I'm using, um, I need to kind of slightly work against it. Uh, a few little marks. So in the photo, that's obviously a, a white, a white light that's just kind of coming through, but I'm using I'm using more of the orange. There. Just think about the angle. So obviously this is a window frame, which is not overly interesting as a it's just a grid. So I'm trying to make it interesting by 
by doing almost a, a slightly more unusual patchwork of stuff. Some color there. And this color's got to almost bleed in a little bit to the scene. Yeah, so this needs to will need to be filled up. This is where we've got some of the elements here. Very, very conscious. I, I don't want to draw um, lines, uh, which is why I'm tentatively blocking some. I say tentatively, that's quite a firm block, but I'm I'm conscious. So let's say that whatever that is, <laughs> this tube-like thing, um, I don't want it to look perfect. So I'll just do a, an edge like that. So it's kind of wonky. And what that does is it makes me not feel self-conscious about getting things exact um, until I want it to be exact or close to exact in my mind anyway. So same with table legs, which are over here. Um, I, I kind of almost want to sabotage how it looks by having a leg slightly slightly off. That's all going to be dark. Little line there. We'll go in. Just want to. So there's a couple of colours here, which I guess they're relatively new for me. Uh, this is called buff titanium. Normally, I, I really don't like that color. There's a color Liquitex do called parchment, which is even better. But uh, what it does is for something like this, it will give me just uh, something. So I'm not using white. Um, so it's, it's still, to my mind, uh, there's a bit more color in it. But I just want to examine this rickety old table here. And this mark, just what I started with, just helps me to break up. Because the table, I mean, it's, it's not overly interesting to, to paint. It's what you what you started with. And there's a couple of things there. Obviously, the light, how that works, is going to be quite a big player. Let's draw that out. So the previous painting just helps to create a bit of texture. And we'll just, again, I'm, I'm gonna illuminate this with some more white in a minute. I just want, always wanna make sure that color is paramount. And again, gonna be careful not to paint. Um, the bars. Okay, so we'll get tempted to use this color, so I think we'll we'll stick with that. So that's the little mixture I've got. Just a bit more white with it. So this should be a slightly zingier yellow and I'm going to put a little mark there just to tell me that that's a kind of level of depth I'm, I want from the some of the strong highlights anyway it's going to be even stronger than that but just to start placing things and we'll kind of block so something I've noticed some people do is that the build up to whatever the, the focal point is, I suppose, uh, with some people, because it's blended, um, it takes a bit more time to get to the point. Um, so it's one of the things I, I definitely, I like to make the point of the light or what's coming in as a very pronounced thing quite early on. So this is gonna be even stronger. So I've got more white, I've got more heft, behind the, the stroke, just so it pops. 
And actually, you kind of don't need too much stuff at the back. Um, because if you overpaint, it's going to just look really heavy. But again, just, just looking at measurements. Don't need to look at measurements. Um, there. So sprinkling of yellow, some buff titanium. I'd like to also incorporate some blue somewhere. Um, and I'll do that fairly shortly. Uh, so just in there, the reason I'm, so I'm mixing up this color again, I'm just gonna put some blue in. It's just so this light just at the back here, which is quite a strong, quite a strong light. I just wanted a bit more blue coming through. Uh, just, just to counteract the slightly warmer one. And again, I'll maybe echo this in a couple of places. And just, so this is why it's quite good working on a few, on the majority of the painting at the same time. So you can start to incorporate everything you've used. So it's, it echoes in the painting. And we'll do, again, we'll do something a little bit more um, dynamic, maybe around here. Um, just, just trying to find the angle. Yeah, could could do with a cleaner brush, but just. Try more color. And back into the warmer color. And just, just trying to find things. So I'm not trying to create this, like get a ruler out and get an exact kind of trajectory of the um, light. Because I wanted to break up a little bit this stage and then I can I can sharpen it up um, towards the end. Okay, so there's a bit of a column here. Um, I can just go. Yeah, so it looks fairly chaotic. Um, but when you start putting these things in, it just starts to Let's elevate some more of the kind of focal points. And it'd be surprising how much you, you kind of don't really need to do. Okay, so a little bit more on that side. I might introduce some darks. So occasionally I use this, I use quite a bit of this stuff uh, just to get access water out. Yeah, so this needs to go lighter. We'll do that now. Um, yeah, just trying to find the right shade.
bit more yellow in this. Um, Yeah, just leave that in. It's going to go even lighter than that. Just want to introduce some darks. I say darks. I'm going to use the brush I previously used. Just so I can start to seal up some of these bits. A little bit more blue in this mixture, just so it plays against the orange a little bit more. And just in here, it's fairly dark. So I, I could choose to utilize the orange underneath there by just crackling it through And just a dark shadow pulled out there. And just here. Sometimes when I do a painting, um, I think it would probably be, a, be about a point like this where I'd start weighing up um the almost the, the time scale it's going to take me <laughs> to to kind of finish it off properly because there's some pictures where let's say there's more drawing involved um I mean I think this is this, this is fine but um yes yeah, just how much of the drawing I've Pull out. I like to focus on that, uh, and I'd like to do something with the uh, window frame, which is where I'm going now. Using a bit more cobalt blue here. So some firm and some where I can just crackle around. So we'll start to go. So I, I kind of, in, in, the stuff I do, I like to showcase that, you know, the, the drawing is hopefully essential as well as the painting. So, you know, getting things, try, trying to get things right anyway. Um, just want to stick a bit of orange in my dark just to vary the dark. And then we want to go dark again, so maybe at the top here. And we just leave a little something a little bit more and we can just start to come in. I've been having some late nights because we've discovered this, um, our, our new favorite YouTube channel. If you like anything like human psychology, anything like why people do stuff, there's this um, channel called the Behavior Panel. And it is so addictive. Um, it's they just analyze kind of people who've been interviewed and they go through clinically whether they think they're lying or not. Their body language. Their body language. Yeah, Marie's just letting me know what I'm missing. So bearing in mind we haven't seen anyone for, for ages. As I was, um, as I'm working tonight, 
all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh God, what, what, what does this say about me? Um, but I've been using it on Marie. Marie really hates me. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, so just edging the, the, like you start, the lost and found, I think is the official term, something like that. Yeah, so quite a delicate little process. Maybe change up the color, I've just put in some of the mucky gray I've got. And yeah, so we want to just change up some of this color. Again, just almost sabotage it, don't make it, that's almost too, too perfect. Um, no, it's just that's such a straight line, so I might just corrupt that a little bit uh, if I go back. Um, yeah, so stuff like that is really to bed in the fact that there's something there. Um, just checking time, obviously. I'm not going to overly finish this, but we'll we'll see what we can do in the next few minutes. Just work our way along. And obviously this is going to be the, the big thing. So I'm I'm definitely going to invest some time there. Just a little bit more on this side. Might be an age thing, but I definitely notice when I paint, um, I'm, I'm really thinking, um, <laughs> really, really thinking about um, the process I'm, I'm that kind of I, I want to represent. Um, rather than just, you know, just do a painting. Okay, so just a couple of little marks there. Little marks there. So I can still do some stuff here to, to punch it forward. There's a shelving unit here. Again, I'm, I'm not overly keen on loads of lines, so I'm not sure where, where it finishes either. We'll just concentrate on this bit. Okay, so need to promote this. Just before I do that, just going to trim in. The framework here and again just, just trying to paint it clumsy. I think that the line stuff where you showcase line work is, it, it can really kill a painting. So um, I'm, I'm trying to just not overplay that. It's one of the things I think sometimes when you look at your old paintings, you think, what the hell was I thinking? Okay. and. There. So I know I'm coming up to strong light here. So I might just strengthen up some of the line like that line. That's a bit too strong, but then might. There's separation there. So we might do something over there. This then dips down. Uh, the paint in some areas is still quite um, workable. So if I need to just work into it, I'll, I'll just use more paint. Just a little bit careful there. Yeah, so I just wanted that drift down. There's quite a bit of glare I've noticed coming down, but um, at the end, I'll, I'll twist this around so you can see. So that just informs me I've got to be 
just a bit thicker with the final blobs that I've put in. So this is one of the issues, I suppose you, you're going to reveal some of the grain. Okay, so we'll go in with the last few strokes, just, just clean this up a little bit. Okay, so just need a clean brush for this. So the idea is you, you kind of showcase what you've got already, but you just enhance it with some highlight. I'll use both of those. Just, so it kind of works through the colors I've started with ending here. And we'll just see how the, these go at the end. So lots of crackling going on. Um, so just making some of these a bit more solid and firmed up. So this is where, I mean, that was probably too strong, but will uh, persevere. Kind of go gray in there. And just strengthen that light. The light just catching some of these bits and just here. And just pick these out, just kind of spruce up the light around there. Again, just some a few blocks. It's kind of the nature of the style is a, a kind of block next to something that might be a little less concise. Just so at the end, your, hopefully your brain jumps and then see something firmer. And that just informs you that that's the bit that, that's uh, coherent. Just turn this down. Hate fussing. <laughs> okay, so we'll just uh, finish. I'll say finish, just a little bit more stuff down here. There's this kind of rope hanging on a hook around here, so we'll just elaborate. Okay, so on the table, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, so there's a few things that can create little diagonals. So we can have some of those. Some of them slightly vary in color. So I've just put a bit more of the orange, slightly muddy variation. And, and we need something, so there's a little bit of cable over there, and then back to the strong light. 
and we can just maybe promote. I kind of felt the color was going to go off a bit more here, but right. Okay, we're going to end here, but we're going to really pop the window frame. So it's one of the, the things with painting this way is it can look quite um, unkempt. Um, so you, you kind of almost got to give it a chance till the end where you can really measure um, the unkemptness against some refined edging, which will hopefully fizz the thing to life. Again, I'm trying very hard to not draw straight lines. And just, I don't know if it's because I'm tired, but I'm shaking a bit. Age, probably age. Uh, uh, So I went over. Just a few more little blobs. So I could do, do a tidy up job with some of the windows. Um, might do. It helps sometimes to just break up the line. Otherwise, it's a bit too repetitive. So we'll just break those up with some light. Nearly there. I've, I've learned everything, all of my techniques from Marie. So when you see her next month, You'll see her, you'll see all the signs. Right, so just a few little finalized bits and pieces. Um, yeah, if I was doing this properly, I'd probably spend a bit more time. Um, just tidying up, <laughs> uh, just a few edging bits. So if I still got, some of my early color, I can just almost, it's a, it's a thing of just strengthening up some of the marks. Um, and it helps to seal up the painting. So like these things, uh, the, the assertive stuff pops against the grain, but the grain will still possibly override some of that because there's a lot of it. So um, just a couple of minutes, just blocking in some stuff. Still like that bit, bit of um, orange. That's fine. Uh, yeah, there's actually a line running across there. Um, yeah, maybe leave that. And uh, just here, it's a bit of just a little bit of maintenance. Um, still got some light here, so what we'll, we'll do is we'll just edge that line in. It's not a line, it's actually a bit of shade. Oh, the mouth all over again. Just leave well enough alone. Um, Uh, 
yeah, I think you can pretty much imagine just whatever bit more build up. Um, because I could just go go on and on, and I'll never stop. Um, I think I'll I think I'll leave it there because I think it gives you a good idea. Just launching in, maybe not worrying about the aesthetics too much at the beginning, and at the end you can really tie it together. But um, yeah, I think I'll I think I'll leave it there. Um, I'll just turn this around. Okay, so let's, if you really squint, you'll see in your, your nightmares. Um, anyway, uh, I hope that was okay. And you can unmute yourself if you want to, if you've got any questions. Can you just show us the reference picture again, please? Of course. I just turn the other one around. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah.